Hello, Keith here and welcome to the August 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. So, hot on the heels of our delayed July overview, this month has been a mixed bag weather-wise, but as the days are starting to shorten significantly, will the performance slow down as we get into autumn? As always, a reminder of our installation, so we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, 9 panels on the west facing roof, 7 panels on the east facing roof, with a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. We also have five pylon batteries with a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts and a Solis 5G inverter. So, as we cycle through the monthly representation of the solar day for our location, let's move on with the summary for August and look at whether we've had an improvement on July. And midway through the month on August 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the east, northeast, at 5.42 in the morning and sets at 20 past 8 in the evening and that's in the direction of west-northwest. There is a total of 14 hours and 37 minutes of daylight on this date. And overall, the 15th of August has 1 hour and 34 minutes less daylight compared to the 15th of July. And at the middle of the day, the sun is 53 degrees above the horizon, which again is 7 degrees lower than the same date in July. Weather-wise, we have had more rain than in July, but August is actually traditionally a wetter month uh, than July for our part of the world. We have again had higher than average rainfall for the time of year. Our Netatmo weather station measured 62 millimetres of rain which is 129% of the average monthly rainfall for August, according to our local Met Office weather station. However, the second half of the month was much drier than the first half, and we have seen an improvement on solar generation for the second half of the month. So, for August overall, we saw 692 kilowatt hours of generation, which is down on July, but that is to be expected as the solar day is now shortened in day by day. Overall, we averaged 22 kilowatt hours of generation per day, but we only saw five days where generation was over 30 kilowatt hours. Our worst day was the 5th of August, where we only generated 8.3 kilowatt hours. But our best days were the 9th and the 10th of August, where on both days we generated 32 kilowatt hours. Now, I should mention here that the 2nd of August, where the asterisk shows on the graph, is an estimation and that's due to a schoolboy error by myself with the Wi-Fi settings. I actually changed the settings on our router to improve our internet performance in the house as we now have a dedicated 2.4 GHz channel for smart devices. So that means I didn't need each Wi-Fi repeater to be split into a dedicated channel for 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz. Unfortunately, um, I'd forgotten that the solar inverter is actually connected to a 2.4 gigahertz channel that I just turned off. So a day later, realizing that we had no data, I had to go back into the loft and reconnect the inverter to the new smart home 2.4 gigahertz channel. So a little bit frustrating, um, but yeah, we didn't lose that much data in the scheme of things. But if we look at our best performing days, the 9th and the 10th of August, the 10th was the better day for generation performance overall. And if we look at the 10th of August on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see it was a pretty clear sky all day as there are no big drops in generation where it might have been cloudy. So of the 32 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 10 kilowatt hours directly from the panels, sent eight and a half kilowatt hours to the batteries and exported 13 and a half kilowatt hours back to the grid. And of the batteries, we used 12 kilowatt hours. And in terms of peak generation, in terms of kilowatt hours, the gap at the beginning of the month was again due to the Wi-Fi error. But for the dates where we do have data, we saw a maximum of 6 kilowatt hours at peak generation on the 1st of August and a minimum of 2.1 on the 5th of August. Typically on a daily basis, our peak generation was between 4 and 5 kilowatt hours and for the month we averaged 4.5 kilowatt hours. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage and grid export. The 10th was the best day in August in terms of split between solar generated usage and grid import 
with 99% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and batteries. On that day, we only imported 31 watts from the grid, but generated 32 kilowatt hours, used 22 kilowatt hours, and exported 13 kilowatt hours. Over the month, we exported 127 kilowatt hours in total, and we were averaging four kilowatt hours of export per day. And on the five days where we exported over 10 kilowatts, with our best being 13 and a half kilowatt hours on the 10th of August. And as mentioned, due to the Wi-Fi error, the second and third are estimates. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery and grid import for the month. Again, with the second and third being estimates. As you can see, for August, we had 19 days when 95% or more of our electricity came directly from solar generation. And as you can see from the rain chart earlier, from the 8th to the 23rd of August, this level of generation correlates well with the drier period in the month. For the month in total, 91% of our electricity usage was from the solar panels and batteries, with 9% imported from the grid. If we take a look at import, this is how our import cost per day looks. The blue being our standing charge at 42 pence per day, and the orange being the grid import cost at 34 pence per kilowatt hour. So our average import cost per day is one pound and three pence, and that reduces to 61p if you remove the daily standing charge. So how did we do overall in August 2023? As we saw, 91% of our electricity consumption in August was through solar generation, either directly from the panels or from the battery. We generated 692 kilowatt hours of electricity, of which we used 614 kilowatt hours directly, exported 127 kilowatt hours, and sent 260 kilowatt hours to the battery. Our grid import cost for August was 34 pounds and one pence, and that was for 62 kilowatt hours. We were also paid 11 pounds 50 for our export for the month, and that reduced our electricity bill overall to 22 pounds and 52 pence. Our generated usage, if the system wasn't in place, would have cost an additional 208 pounds and 64 pence. So that means our total cost, if we hadn't had solar generation and battery storage, would have been 242 pounds and 66 pence based on our total house usage. So this month has seen a reduction in performance but that is to be expected as we get closer to autumn. We generated 28 kilowatt hours less than we did in July, which was a 4% reduction, but we did send 15 kilowatt hours more to our batteries compared to last month. We also saved seven pounds more than last month, and we actually saw an increase of 5% on our overall solar utilization. In total, for the year to date, we've generated four and a half megawatt hours, of which we've used 3.6 megawatt hours and exported 1.2 megawatt hours. And our grid import total is now at one and a half megawatt hours, which is around 30% or 36% even of our grid import for the same period last year. And that was our August 2023 performance review. Uh, we're now at that point where we have 12 months worth of data for our solar and battery installation. So the next video will be a review of the first 12 months and how the system has performed, what we have saved, and more importantly, when we think the investment will pay off. That's likely to be out in the next seven days or so, as I'm just putting the finishing touches to it this week. As always, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see, and if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.